Hello again, I just got back from Fantastic Four and I didn't find it as bad as, as everyone says. Much like my associate, Chris Cesar Sanders, I'm not going to go to reheat it, but just putting it on the table that I thought it might be important to hear before you listen to the rest of this. That as it has been in the past, 10 years have passed since the Time Story duology of films, which I've just gotten finished looking at. Right, so it's yet another attempt to do this, yes, and, but given how many people, people reacted, or rather overreacted to it, as well as how it hasn't been doing well critically at all, or how the box office has been less than expected, it may, may be how you like the other kind of self rights spectrum removal, and which, which is a shame because, in my opinion, they really, really try with this one. I may not have found it had, had as good a hood as Maybe from the Dark Knight, Hate, or other films they try to do with this kind of like same as all the almost Marvel films nowadays, but the cinematic universe ones that ones but I the idea that it's objectively worse than Batman and Robin or Superman for the Push for Peace or other really bad superhero films is a bit Sketch. I mean, I even point out before my views of those films that I didn't even find the story duology as Bezos said. And which, and but and with regarding this whole thing, the story contains many of the basic elements from previous incarnations of character characters that, or her young men and women, and one young woman and are you know, selected to take part in experiments. And for which change forever in some most fantastic ways. Reed Richards is elastic. Sue can fade from sight. Johnny's the human torch. The thing just loves to fight. And if I be so bold, I can honestly say that people really overreacted badly, in fact, at. at the reaction to Michael B. Jordan and as the human torch that is that even though okay so all I'm saying is that that's the that people really react to bad to this. I really like the way that the heavy actor addressed it, but he was very polite even when people towards like Scassium were not. And to be honest, stranger things have happened, happened, happened to superhero movies these days. I mean, Superman is British now, as as, as at least his actor is, and we've just come off a movie much a year ago which had a wisecracking gun, Tony Raccoon, and a talking tree as its stars, so... And, for the most part, the actors they chose actually actually weren't that bad. I mean, they're just... It seemed like these are nice kid, high college kids in the situation where... where Miles Teller as, as Reed Richards... It's Kate Mara as, as Susan Storm, and the film that they chose to adopted in the relationship. And so racially, he, the, he, he, Miles, you know, Storm is pretty cool, you know, I mean, and I think about the form, it would have had to been Jimmy Bell as Ben Grimm, yeah, man. and because even though the outfit goes with rough pads, which may be out of character points, but they do want to come together for the inevitable effects from climax, and to a point where the film often, admittedly, the way you cast on the characters and hairs are, are played in so long, from placing an after-school special with a budget of $122 million, I mean, I mean that. But, anyway, there's so much scene genes in this, I could have sworn that I was, I was playing, he might need 3D as you want, it wasn't his the whole thing, so... In that, and I tried to come up with any spoilers, but I'm gonna have to address this since, in a sense, my favorite character, to be honest, had to be, had to be the new version of Doctor Doom, played by Toby Kebbell. He, in this version, he is a cyber terrorist. There's really no other way I can describe it, since that he's, I mean, he plays Counter Strike in the classical music of spare time. I mean, just imagine Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks, and Robert Jungle, as well as as Alex Large and Clark McCormick have got him, and that, and that, and, 
Even though I agree that may not be as good as, say, the Dark Knight Saga, the most Mac Universe, or, heck, even Man of Steel, you know, on that, on that, I will admit they at least tried with this one, this one that, um, they really, really tried, and I had to commend them for that, to be honest, even if, <coughs> even I have to admit the single digit tomato meter rating, and it's pretty damn evidence, and it's as is a fact that, Frank was just in place of way the hand of the film. Um, the, oh man, it does seem quite crowded for uh, an hour and 40 minute movie. Movie and, really and, and, but I definitely think that get, even with those also on the table, it's good we could go away to learn for any future versions of these character characters. Characters, spends most likely they're going to be selling the rights back to Marvel, Marvel, depending on how well. Or, or, or on what the film does in the next couple weeks. Thanks that. As I said in my reviews of, reviews of the previous two films we had a lot of bat, versions of Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the X-Men over the years, and we'll continue to do so. So, and, oh, and also we're even getting into more versions of Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers over in the coming years since Ninja Turtles 2 is coming out next year. And because of the, how crowded next year looks, Pirates is getting bumped in 2017. And so, at the very least, it is better than the Beast of Spider Man 2. I'd be at least willing to watch it again when it comes out on DVD and also show other people people that since. Anyway, but even so, my final rating is a fair 2.5 stars to 4. Or so, I'm gonna have a cut here and talk about some more coming attractions. Okay, so once again, Star Wars Episode 7, Heaven Trailer looks very impressive. So I'm not going to get into further details since I already did that a while ago. I'm also working on the Revenge of the Sith review. I have it at least three fifths of the way complete. I should hopefully be able to do more research on it and get it finished and get it out before August ends so I can finish Cycle like Jedi in September. Return of the Jedi and. Barring that. I would say that Batman vs. Superman Down the Justice this looks the most promising for next year. The ones I show that coming out next year, since I'm still trying to remember what other ones I saw, but yeah. As Snyder confirmed, and I, I insinuated that the actions of Man Steel are going to have consequences, which will lead to. Also, if I'm looking forward to see how they can do with rendering the biggest cash cow of about DC and Warner Brothers, who's, who's as a new character, as a new. Which is the character. Given very much of Dark Knight Returns up in the whole train, which having Superman solve human conflicts, flex, and the way the fight's gonna be handled, that's the way the bat armor and the redesigned Batmobile and everything. And also seems very and also and also Lex Luthor, we get the first glimpses of of, of just Aaron's first portrayal of him and I, I'm, even though he has this kind of mold that looks kind of like, smoke like, a, like a 90s rock star, or given that tweet he shared, that photo, photo of, of him with a shaved head, my guess is the Kryptonite is probably going to be related to him losing his hair in that movie. The movie that's also has come, they're going to be wearing the Kryptonite power battle suit in there as well. I mean, I mean, the comics as well. I mean, and his performance, I'm not sure how he's going to be stacking with a full film against. The likes of Gene Hackman and Kevin Spacey or claims around the animated series, but at the very least he's probably gonna be able to pass for a Michael Rose model in Smallville. I mean and and given how the uncle and, and I definitely trust him as Kabi more as Superman than I do as apparently the next one, Man from Uncle. It's weird that I've never seen a TV show at all. I gather it's just quasi James Bond thing, but I'm personally going to be way respectful better if that's the case. If I could find a show somewhere, I might change my mind, but even with Guy Ritchie at the helm, a director I actually have quite a bit of respect for. The man behind such great films as Smash, and Action Locks, Talking to Smoking Bills, that even his version of Sherlock Holmes are actually quite interesting, but. I really would not have gone with keeping the plot in the 60s when the show was being aired since I would have personally wanted to update for a new generation like they did with Mission Impossible Films, which brings me on to my next point, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. 
so we're just still doing quite well. And definitely now I want to see it yeah, because of her, uh, yeah, but I have to see Ghost Walker first, I don't know what's going on. Since a few other scenes that look quite impressive, such as the underwater heist with no oxygen. And since they did it just for three minutes, and that's there's some love spring because they're without it, but that's each moment after that you have that you start losing brain capacity. While the car chase on the streets hits Italy as well as as they highlight the whole thing. There was no CGI involved in that whole thing. They actually put Tom Cruise outside of a head of a head of a C seventeen and at almost five thousand feet, I mean heat, so Definitely helps that the first three film films are one of my favorite films of his, closely followed by I Day He's a Thunder, and even though he didn't have, have a starring role in them, was him, he liked his role as well as Grossman and Tropic Thunder as well, man. I mean, well, and Ant Man still looks really fun and as well, since and it's definitely had a lot of creative use of a character that's, you know, that's definitely not as big a name as before. Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, the X-Men, which I think Marvel's definitely had a track record of heard of Tony Heroes, heroes that may not be familiar to not casual non viewers like me and making them into 100 million, 300 million grossing hero heroes and helps to like the actors involved, like Paul Rudd as Scott Lang as well as Michael Douglas as as Hank Pym. And definitely looks like a lot of fun to be honest and Last one, just gonna kind of get out of the way. A couple gonna get out of the way. This might descend in order. I guess did these in. There's no particular order, to be honest. But this general try to send in a level of excitement and interest. That's as or try to tie them against something. But War Room, which is a religious drama about how it's divorce. Which even you to remove that element, the religious element from it, it's it's been done. A lot. Ever since the seventies, we're playing with this which I haven't seen yet, but it's really good. Know that. And my least anticipated one had to be Scorch Trials. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just not a fan of the Maze Runner series. Series that. I mean, the whole thing. And the danger of those kind of situations is not accompanied or such a common theme of a story character as an investor then. And I can also say I don't care about the Gladiators or the Scorchers or whoever they're calling these people now. You know, that's what. And it's definitely going to be blown out of the wall when Monarchy of Power 2 comes out, which also I forgot to mention that one since it's going to be closing that one and just kind of wrap things up here. I was there when Mon Hem began in 2012. That's the only fight they'd be there when it ends next Thanksgiving. So, anyway, it's hard to say. If you have a comment box below on the Google Plus page to see what you thought of it and. Without it was worth all the hype or the hate it's gotten. Bang.